wife, Diocese of Tucson. And I listened to him every week, and I was interested in being a contributor to his podcast. So I recorded a bit for his podcast. And clearly, what I'm selling, he wasn't buying, uh, <laughs> um, uh, which is fine. We have a different style. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, what happened was uh, when that went south and it, I wasn't going to get on it, I thought about, oh, gee, you know, I feel called to do something. And I came up with the idea of, well, what's going on in the world? People are living in this falsehood that they call the truth. And it's in the eye of the beholder. Whatever I say is true is true. And if you don't think it's true for me, then you're discriminating against me and all that fun stuff. So that's where what is truth came out of. Uh, Pilate's line to Jesus, what is truth? As we just heard in the Passion. Sure. Indeed. So Indeed. I wanted to do a podcast that spoke the truth of the church to the <sighs> very secular world that seems to have forgotten that there's a capital T there, not just a small T. It's the truth. Amen to that. So that's how I, I guess. guy. <laughs> you can come visit me in Phoenix, man. We can, we can do something. I love it. I love it. It's um, dry heat here. Just, just keep telling yourself that's dry heat. Yeah. I mean, I know about dry heat. I'm sure Bob does as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you've been in the desert. I hear a few times. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how what is truth got started. So I asked the, our local bishop, Bishop Olmsted, who is an amazing bishop, uh, just published a, a, a letter on the Eucharist. Uh, he's also uh, written kind of a local letter on manhood and what true man manhood is and that men need to step up in the church. Um, so he's amazing. And he gave me permission to do this for my local community. As I was telling Terry and Phil, my local community is made up of senior citizens who never heard the word podcast in their life. <laughs> uh, if I went by number... Um, I would have stopped this uh, years ago, but I, I don't look at numbers. I have one listener. His name's Jim. He's in Western PA. I don't know where, somewhere in the Pittsburgh area. Maybe not far from you, but Robert. And uh, he listens faithfully. That's the only listener I know I have. Uh, <laughs> we I, deal with that too. I rural just, Minnesota. Yeah. Um, non podcast. They don't know what a podcast is. No clue. And a bunch of seniors who live who come from the Midwest, they definitely don't know what a podcast is. But I do it anyway. You know, I'm called to do it. So I do it. Sure. You know, I'm saying it for myself. Uh, so, which some of the time I think I am. But uh, since I switched podcast hosting uh, companies, the, the quote unquote numbers seem to be higher, but I don't want to, I, I don't care about that. I care about right. speaking the truth of the church, of Christ, and the rest really doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, but yeah, I, I've been a deacon for a little over 18 years. Um, and for a Jewish boy from Worcester, Massachusetts, that's not a bad deal because I didn't start off that way. <laughs> you know, God works in mysterious ways. And uh, I don't know about your story, but my story is in Jewish tradition, you're named after the first letter of a deceased relative. And letter, uh, I think the gentleman's name was Shmuel or something like that. I don't know. So it began with an S. So my parents debated Samuel, good Jewish name, right, Samuel, and decided on Stephen. And they ended up spelling it with a PH, just like some deacon that I heard of, a uh, proto-martyr of the church. And um, <clears throat> I did my 13 years at Temple and got by mitzvah and got the heck out and became an atheist for uh, between 13 and 28. Uh, atheist agnostic. I didn't believe in anything uh, uh, until uh, God got me. Um, and you can thank Franco Zeffirelli for that, actually. Um, I assume you've watched many times Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Okay. Well, I was sitting in a room by myself watching that show in around uh, 1980, somewhere around there. Uh, had no direction in life, finished college, had no idea what I was going to do with my life, totally lost. Um, and I saw the show. I don't know why I was watching it. I'm Jewish. I have no idea what that was about. And at a moment in the show, I cannot describe this. This has never happened since. I could feel God's presence, and I knew what I was seeing was the truth. So I was living at home. I had no 
job at the time, 28 years old, no direction. And I walked into my mother's bedroom and I said to her, Mom, I now believe in God and Jesus is his only son. And she looked at me like I was insane. Um, and when I met my wife, I already believed in Christ. And so I was going to convert to being a Lutheran. And since I married an Irish Catholic, um, being Catholic was just fine with me because I already believed in Christ. So that was easy. Um, and that's how that journey happened. And um, one time on retreat, because I don't, you know, I'm not a cradle Catholic. So I, I don't know right. a lot of stuff. So no, I, I agree. Yeah. Only one anyone of them else here. here right to right me, now. Um, a convert? You are too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm a cradle. I'm cradle Catholic. I'm the only one of the bunch. Yeah, Bob and I are both converts. Uh, from Protestant denomination. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I was on retreat. Sort of. Retreat. Sort of. <laughs> I was uh, baptized Presbyterian. That's ah. the extent of uh, my yep. religious uh, formation before I got married. Ah. Okay. It's good to be a that So there's three converts out of the four here. That's so sad. <laughs> here, man. So anyway, I'm sitting on retreat, and there's this guy up on the altar wearing a white alb in this stole over the shoulder. I'm saying, I said to one of my fellow retreatants, what, what's that? Because I have no clue. And he said, that's a deacon. I said, what's a deacon? And he told me, and that's where the idea started to percolate. So years later, I'm in a parish, married, a daughter's born. And I went up to our deacon in the parish. And I said, you know, I was thinking, I, you know, maybe God's calling me to do this. He said, I'm going to bring in an informational flyer for you on the diaconate program. And I'm saying, he's never going to remember this. But if he does, I'll show up. A week later, he brings in the diaconate information. A little flyer. <laughs> Go there. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm in discernment. Um, and four years plus years later, I'm ordained. So. Um, yeah, uh, I can't even describe uh, the majesty and the incredible gifts of God. I mean, I, I don't know how I got from a Jew to a to a to an atheist to a to a Catholic to a deacon, other than the grace of God, because it's not me. Amen. I'm quite sure about that. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise Amen. God. Yes. So I'm a, I am a strange Catholic gentleman. Without <laughs> that. <laughs> so are we. Yes, so so are we. I am the Jewish Catholic uh, in the diocese, I think, and I, I'm, I'm rather strange, yeah. Uh, but uh, I carry the Old Testament with the new uh, with me. So um, I don't know if you had any questions, but I can, I'll stop rambling. So um, what was that, Bob? <laughs> Give me your Go ahead and ask him. Go yeah. ahead and ask him. Yeah, he's giving you the go ahead, Terry. Oh, that was your audio oh, break. Come on. Is that is the, that's my that's my cue from the director. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be the director. Okay. <laughs> Every show's gotta have one. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> so then uh how, how how does your formation program work? I mean, for us here in the St. Cloud Diocese, it involves uh, four years of grad, well, 36 credits of grad school at St. John's uh, Seminary. Wow. Yeah, I mean, where I came from, which is the Diocese of Worcester, Massachusetts, that's where I was ordained. I'm in coordinated here in Phoenix now. It was a four full year program, although I've been ordained 18 years. So uh, that may well have morphed. I've been here almost 15. So what's going on there? I don't know. This okay. diocese, the Diocese of Phoenix, you have to do two years at what at a place called Kino Catechetical Institute. So it's two years of almost pre-formation. And that's mainly lay people learning about the faith. It could be catechists, anyone who's interested in learning more about the faith. So you do two years and then it's more like a five-year deal, uh, including internships, um, before you're ordained. And they're in cohorts here. Um, I don't know how they met. We met like twice a week, and we didn't have cohorts in Massachusetts. We had classes. So we'd meet twice a week in class um, for the four full years other than the summer. Um, so I, I, I don't know every particular, but it, this is a great diocese to be in. Our bishop is... Um, very much 
a warrior against um, the culture and against kind of the world we've created, which is fractured, I think, and divided and divisive. And, um, you know, I think it's because we've forgotten who we are and we've forgotten the truth of who we are, which is God's creation, beloved of God. And that's what, what is truth about my podcast, which is very minor in the sea of life, but is a small attempt to bring the truth of Christ to others. Beautiful. Speak a little bit more about uh, coming up with a name, what is truth and what was all behind that. I know you've talked about it a little bit here in the beginning, but just to expound on when you sure. said, hey, what's my name, you know, for the podcast, what sure. is truth, What what's that goal and goal completely for you? When I started What is Truth Catholic podcast, originally it was going to be What is Truth podcast, but there was already a million of those out there. So I added the word Catholic in because then it became unique. Uh, I started it in August 2014, uh, was the first episode, the end of August. Uh, I came up with segments that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to do a saint, so we have a saint of the week, because I wanted to introduce saints to people. Um, as people to pray to and role models. Um, I do a segment called Catholics in the News where I talk about some Catholic who's done something that most people wouldn't hear about because they don't make the front page of the paper. Um, then, of course, I preach, which gives me a good excuse to at least prepare a homily. Sometimes my pastor will come up to me and say, want to preach this week? And if I didn't have something in the bag, I would be... <laughs> Let the spirit move me, but still, it's nice to have something prepared. So I do a homily in there. Then I do a, um, a segment called Truth in the Media, where I look at something in books, movies, um, podcasts, radio, something that has a Catholic bent to it, to kind of hopefully get people to read something or hear something that teaches the truth of the faith. Then I do my favorite one, which is I don't get it, which is my attempt to figure out the craziness that the world is up to, whether it's churches being ransacked or people passing all sorts of bills uh, allowing us to kill people who think they should be killed or whatever it is. Uh, and then I end it with truth topic of the week, which is often Pope Francis teaching the truth um, to live in the world. Um, and I kind of work in that format um, pretty much weekly. But the, the idea came from Pontius Pilate. It came from the Easter readings when Pilate said to Christ, what is truth? And um, we know what truth is, Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. So the whole point of the podcast was, I'm not Jesus, but I hope I know some of the truths of our faith that were taught. And the whole point of the podcast was to impart those in some form using media and using things in popular culture to kind of educate people without necessarily getting into the catechism and into things that would theologically put people to sleep. Um, and I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a beast from the East, so I can talk a million miles an hour and that's culturally normative where I come from. Um, back East people can, so, um, that's what got me into this and how I picked the title. And I went to my bishop, who said, go ahead, as long as you keep it with the elderly, which is not a great population uh, for this. But, hey, it is what it is. Maybe they're listening, right? We don't know. But even if one soul, right? One soul. Yeah, I, I've got my one fan from Western PA. And according to Anchor, I've got, I think I'm up to 17 whopping people. But you know what? If two or more are gathered, that's fine. Amen. That's Amen. It's, you know, somebody, you know, the news, if I die, my wife will have seven years of listening to me. So that's one way of looking at it. Very good point. I like that. Finally, we, finally, a, po a, finally a podcast. We have more listeners then. Yeah. Even, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have, I have, one of the things I do is I'm in obedience. So if I was given permission to, quote, advertise it or put it on social media or go on Reddit or do things like mm -hmm. that. I, but when I was I told, you'd do fine. I, I, when I was told, keep it local uh, to your parish, I that was my order. And I'm going to stay in obedience to, to the bishop, uh, even though I'm not sure it'd be the same order seven years later. But still. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't even uh, think of that. Yeah. 
So yeah, yeah I, I think you do a good job. I, I was impressed and you know, you did a good job of uh, segueing between your segments with, you know, some funky disco music at times. I thought it was yeah. great. Uh, I went from Very retro. Um, yeah, I, it's been funny because I've also been, you know, my hobby is technology. I've gone from uh, podcasting on a Mac uh, using my, um, you know, blue mic uh, using GarageBand. Then when I moved into the uh, Google sphere and to Android, I ended up podcasting on a Chromebook using Audacity, which is a mm. um, Windows-based program. Yep. And then I discovered Anchor, sold my Chromebook, and now I podcast on my on my phone, blowing it up on my 32-inch monitor, which I can see you on right now, using Samsung Dex. Uh, so now I've, I've totally changed technology over the years. Um, because I'm a minimalist, less is more for me. So if I can do one podcast from a phone, hey, that's good. So, um, yeah, I don't know how long I'm going to continue this. As I said, August is seven years. Um, but I guess if the Lord wants me to do something else, I will. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going until I drop dead or uh, something else happens, whatever comes first. But I'm old, so who knows? I'm not sure we could make it together for seven years. I don't know. Well, you guys have to put up with each other. I have to put up with myself, which is almost as bad. No? <laughs> Maybe almost as bad. Maybe almost as bad. And they have to listen to me every week, so that's just punishment all by itself. Uh, I'll tell you, you said that. What you, got, what you guys are doing is really important. I mean, whether you have 100 listeners, 1,000 listeners, people need to hear what's being said out there. And um, it is great that we're using new media to try to bring Jesus to other people in whatever way we can. If it's one, if it's a hundred, if it's a thousand, you know, we're all not going to be, you know, Father Mike Schmitz, we're all not going to have, you know, what does Ascension have? Well, we know. Five, two people on Ascension. Uh, you know, right, that's right. Funny. You know, Anchor, the only thing I don't like about Anchor is it keeps asking me to monetize. I didn't do this for money. I, this is just right. about God. I, I, I don't want to monetize this thing. I just want to bring Jesus to people if I can in any way I can. So, um, and hopefully with a little humor involved too, but uh, Amen. I, sure. great do, tool I, for evangelization. That's for sure. It is. And Absolutely. Anchor is easy oh, and great. free, which is well, pretty we'll, awesome. We'll do Deacon and we have an international audience, so I mean, we yeah. have quite a reach. Really? How far do you go? We just get the same stuff. We got a couple of people in France yeah. that listen to us. Well, if I pick up any listeners from Minnesota and they actually email me, I will tell you. And what I'm going to do, guys, on the next one I'm going to record, I'm going to make you the uh, truth in the media. So I'm going to do this podcast on my podcast and see if I can get the 15, 18 people to join you guys um, uh, in whatever way I can. If you guys have a blurb, or something about the podcast, you can send me kind of, I, I know you, uh, Anchor always has a little bit of something, but if there's any kind of write-up you have as to what Strange Catholics is about, what you attempt to do, what it's for, I can read that off and add that to my next podcast I'm going to record. Uh, I've already got the one yeah. written for next week, but the one after I haven't written yet, and I can put that one in in a couple of weeks. Yeah, Phil will take care of that. Good. You send me the data, Phil, and I will have my one listener join you, and I'll tell them, join strange Catholics, because we're all a bunch of strange Catholics, I'll tell you. Yes. We are. Yes. Praise be to God. Hey, anybody who can preach the word and speak the word in this culture and keep themselves sane is definitely a strange Catholic, I'll tell you. Um, in this, what some people have called post-Christian world we're living in right now. Uh, yes. Yeah, very much, so, very much. So more power to you. I, I'm honored to uh, that you asked me because um, someday I hope to uh, that all us deacons who are podcasting can get together. It'd be great to try to get us all together. I don't know how many of us there are who are doing this, but it'd be wonderful to get us all together in a podcast and just speak about what it's been like as a deacon using our ministry this way as part of our, our own evangelization. Um, so I don't know Deacon Jeff Drusinski, but he's on EWTN, so he's got a bigger audience than all of us uh, right now. Uh, yeah, Deacon, Her Deacon Harold Burke Silvers, too. He's yeah. got a big audience, too. Yeah, he's amazing. 
Yeah, I'm not here in his podcast. I did. He did. Pre, he did come and do, do a retreat for the deacons of the diocese of Phoenix a number of years ago. So I've heard him speak, but never his podcast. Uh, not yet, anyway. Um, I'll have to check that out now that I know he has one. He uh, has a couple that he's done. Um, Sons of Thunder was one of them. I remember seeing him on, and then there's another one. But yeah, so he's got one too, and then. They were converting some of his YouTube videos into podcasts for a bit, but I don't know that they are anymore. I haven't yeah. seen the I haven't seen the feed refresh, but it could have been. I have to go back and check uh, it again. Your podcast is audio, or is it both? Are you doing are you pumping videos? Hey. Well, well, we have a YouTube channel, but we haven't actually published any videos. Ah, see, you guys we're are working ahead of me. Yeah, we're working it. that's the one problem with being a solo. You know, person is supposed to have a full time job. You know, it, it's um, yeah. Well, I don't what do you to... think we got? I mean, we got to make money oh, too, buddy. Yeah, I didn't say I was a lonely man. You're <laughs> you're in the army, Bob. I work twenty four seven, three sixty five. Whoa. Well, you you make me look active like... duty, active duty guys. Yeah. Well, yeah, you were definitely you. Be, you got me beat. Not that I'm comparing, but no. Yeah. I just I. Yeah, I'm on call 24 hours a day, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing what you're doing. Uh, so you're a servant in multiple ways, then, serving our country and preparing to serve the Lord. Yeah, part of the reason I'm here is, I mean, you know, service was really easy, easier for me to gravitate to because it's really been a big part of my life. Yeah. Uh, you know, since especially since adulthood, with uh, the military service, and then a lot of modeling from uh family members uh being involved in service and stuff like that so once i became catholic and saw what deacons were doing and kind of got involved in figuring that out it, it really was something that spoke to me and is still speaking to me every day that's wonderful yeah for me my first ministry was social work uh when i when god came to me and kind of Help me see that he exists in in the form of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, I decided to go back to grad school and uh, became a social worker because I wanted to serve the poor, um, and uh, became a therapist and worked primarily with people who are on public assistance, you know, act, state Medicaid, uh, primarily um, through most of my career. Um, that was my first service before I even knew what a deacon was. Um, it was being a social worker and still is. So um, not the highest paid job on the planet, but an incredibly rewarding one, as I imagine serving our country is as well. Hey, love social justice. We speak about here all the time yeah. and about all those different issues. I mean, that's certainly something that we bring to the table and talk about on a regular basis here. Very important. Yeah. And for me lately, it's been all about helping people help themselves out of slavery of addiction, which through COVID-19, by the way, as you know, has run more rampant than it was pre-COVID-19, um, as far as people crawling into substances, alcohol, whatever it is. So, um, yeah, that's my primary focus right now is helping people to move beyond and to see that they're not alcoholics, they're people with alcoholism. That's not how God created them, and that's not who they are. And they're worth more than that. They're not the throwaways of the world. Cool. So um, that's what I do for a living. Um, and uh, my diaconal ministry um, is part time, um, either podcasting or on weekends. As I assume you guys are, are you guys full time or part time in your in your parishes? Well, you're. I know what you do, Bob. You're a full time military, but um, part time. Part time. Yeah. yeah. Well, part my ministry is part time, but I'm also my full time job is as a parish secretary at a completely different church than I minister at, which I, I actually like. Interesting. He's I perfect would, for it. I would love to work for the church. Just never have had the yeah. Never had the so opportunity. Would I. Yeah, I would. Nobody love to. nobody does a bulletin better than Terry. Thank you. Uh -huh. And Phil, what do you do? I run a small technology consulting firm that I own, uh, mm -hmm. doing like virtual CIO 
kind of consulting with clients throughout the Twin Cities in California? Yeah, it's got to got to be a very popular thing, particularly now with everything being, you know, Zoom calls and video conferencing. Yeah, it's done a lot for my profession. You know, behavioral health was smattering doing telehealth. Now telehealth has exploded, and everybody's doing telehealth. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, people with communications and doing what you're doing are very important, especially nowadays. Um, no shortage of work. No shortage of work. I can assure you of that. Yeah, same working with addiction. I'm not running out of people who are struggling with addiction, I'm sorry to say. Uh, yeah, I know. And so that was something uh, at our parish. We set up um, a TV. So we have uh, AANA that meets in our parish uh, a couple times a week. And we set up a TV with a laptop, a power cord, you know, wireless internet d- dedicated just for them so that they can have their members who don't yet feel comfortable coming out into a public space still at least having those interactions with those because when the meetings stopped i mean that was very difficult incredibly very hard difficult. meeting when you can't see the person in, in person that you're talking right. to them it's totally different energy when you're in the room with somebody versus you know when you're seeing someone on video conferencing technology it's wonderful but it doesn't replace that open face to face yeah um but well, we, we've been pretty blessed i mean covid seems to the numbers have gone down in arizona but it's far from done we're, we're averaging right. about 500 cases a day in january we're at 10,000 cases a day so uh, but we are not out of the woods yet we've got about 34 percent of our population in maricopa county vaccinated at this point um i finished my so, a couple of weeks ago good good so one yeah. type of addiction that we've discussed on our podcast and tried to highlight yeah. which we which we all believe don't get doesn't get covered or uh, addressed as much as maybe some of the other substance abuses out there is pornography. And we've tried to bring a lot of light to that here from the experiences that we've had and experiences we've had with others. Is yeah. this is this an area that you've also gotten involved in? Uh, not directly. I have seen Matt Fred on a podcast before. He's kind of the the guru of uh, pornography addiction, at least from the church perspective. Um, an addiction is an addiction. Um, I had people with eating disorders, pornography disorders. Um, I worked with Native Americans for five plus years, and we had a tremendous amount of gambling disorders among Native Americans who worked at casinos and then picked up the bug to gamble their money away that they heard right. at the casino. Right. Uh, pornography is very difficult because human beings were physically created to enjoy some kind of sexual experience. Um, And it creates obviously brain chemistry during that whole process. Um, I mean, it's the same process, admitting powerlessness, turning it over to the Lord and being part of a group that one gets supported and also holds accountability to. Um, That's one of the beautiful things of 12 step is there's accountability there. You have a sponsor, you have somebody to go to, there's somebody who will call you, someone who you can talk to, they'll say, how are you doing with this? Uh, but pornography breaks up marriages and creates all sorts of issues. But I'm not a pornography expert by any means, but as we say, and so, ah, oh, there you go. A drug is a drug is a drug, and porn's a drug. Um, just like gambling is, just like overeating is, a drug is a drug is a drug. Right, endorphins and all that, endorphins and all the brain chemistry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and with with sexuality issues, I mean, you can stop putting a substance in your body. Telling someone not to be sexual in that way is a little bit more challenging because, you know, depending on what their outlets are, if they're married, what they're, you know, people are in different situations in life. So it's a, it might be a little more complicated than simply don't drink that alcohol or don't shoot that into your veins. Right. Um, oh, it's yeah. like eating disorders. If you have an eating disorder, you have to eat though. So you can't give up eating. Right. <laughs> you have an eating disorder. So you have to kind of learn to, to live with those things. I guess I found in my experience that the way to not go there is the old near occasion of sin. If you don't listen to something think of something, experiencing something right. kind of triggers that, you may not go there. But once you watch something, think of something, fantasize about something, you're already doing it. Um, so it's really about avoiding those near occasions of sin. Notice the triggers 
as we say, in addiction treatment. And then when you see the triggers, reach out for help somewhere. Um, because if, they, if you keep thinking about it or whatever, you're going to end up back where you were. Um, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, really well said. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think what we've seen in pornography, at least from our my experience, and I think Phil would concur with this, is with other types of substance abuses, there's been a lot more organized treatment yes. that has been established. Whereas in yeah. pornography, there's some, and it's there's getting some. better, but it's kind of like this secret. A lot of men and women mm -hmm. kind of live in this, in, in the darkness in this. And this is something that, you know, we've discussed that we try to bring to the light and, and try to, you know, uh, put it out there so we yeah. can try to help I, people with it. I mean, the other aspect of it, besides the obvious, is it's another continuation, I think, of the objectification of people that the world does. Yes, uh, yes. With objectifying women, objectifying, you know, we, we treat people sometimes like we're supposed to consume them, like we're consumers, right? That's what our economy is based on, how much we spend. And yep. if our, we spend a lot, our economy is good. If we don't, then it goes in the toilet. So um, we become consumers of this to fill emptiness, I think, inside of us, but like eating fish, which I enjoy, being from the Northeast originally, you're hungry an hour later. It, it doesn't satisfy. Uh, and it leads to obviously the shame, like you go on a bender, you feel shamed after. And then of course, what are you gonna do to feel better? Keep doing it. And it becomes a vicious addictive cycle. Um, yeah, I, I hate addiction of any kind, but I have found that we're all addicted to one thing. You know what that is? What's Tell that? us. Ourselves. <laughs> because it's very hard, I found, to get yourself out of the way. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, it is. For all those Amen. things that we just discussed, Amen. right? Yeah. Especially. Uh, I mean, I'm an old man, and I still have a long way to go to surrender it all, you know, to surrender control. Right. To it's, it's very hard. It's incredibly hard. And how many times uh, and have you told yourself, you can do it, I can do it, I can do it, and you don't need anybody else or anything else, I can do it. We're weak if we don't tell ourselves that, according to society, right? We right. go around crying and emoting, then we're considered weak. Uh, we're naturally we're strong, uh, as St. Paul would say. Amen, indeed. So, yeah, indeed. Um, I think you're listening, you're, you're listening to a special interview with uh, Deacon Steve from the Phoenix Diocese here on Strange Catholics. Just wanted to make sure for our international listeners that they knew that. Phil will cut this out anyway. You can. <laughs> no, I, think I, what you do, I think what you do in pornography is important because it's not, it's because it has connotations of dirty. It, it's often not talked about. It's also made normative because, after all, don't real men watch pornos? Come on, guys. We'll go to the strip club with a butt. You know, right. You know, the old guy thing, you know? Um, but I'm hoping we're going from guys to men. And this, But there's still a lot of guys out there that haven't grown up yet. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, but, I think that um, they're done. that's yeah. somewhat, um, and I, I've said this before on our podcast, that alcoholism that addiction and, and even drug addictions may be more socially acceptable than pornography because once somebody says that they're addicted to pornography the first thing you think of is they're a pervert and they're exactly. a pedophile get my children right. away from them that's right right that's right i mean the main drug that has the stigma is people who shoot things in their arm particularly like heroin that has that same right. purity, nasty, oh, you're a heroin right. addict, junkie, like you're junk. Right. Uh, or a criminal, that, a junkie, yeah. right, yeah. Right, exactly. So, but oh, you're right, alcohol, because it's sold in stores, and in Arizona, it's even sold in Walmart and every place you go. We, we don't have liquor stores here alone. You can buy alcohol anywhere, just about in Arizona. Um, it, it doesn't have that negative stigma that pornography has. I think you're right, Bob, about that. Terry. And the goal is people to come forward and say, you know what, I'm powerless over this thing and I need help. Yes. Yeah. 
no matter what the addiction is, you know, just surrendering. And that's, and that's always, that's all, I think that's always kind of the big key, you know, especially for us, like you said, Steve, you know, we as guys are conditioned to be strong and not to show any weakness. And so when we admit failure or when we admit that we need help, then somehow that makes us less than as men. Yep. Nope. Yep. Well, if you ever think of it, Google Bishop Thomas Olmsted a few years ago, he did a YouTube video, I'm blanking on the name, but it's all about men and the role of men and how men are called to step up and be like St. Joseph, protectors, people who lead their family spiritually, people who aren't an empty seat in the church where the wife brings the kids and the guys at home or getting ready to go to a golf game. Um, I can't, I'm blanking on the name of it. I read it years ago, um, but he he wrote something. And also he did a YouTube video on it um, all about what real men are and what we're called to be. Um, Calling men into the breach? Is that the that's one? That's it. Into the breach. That's it. I knew it. Once you had it, I'd know it. Into the breach. It's great. What do you Bob shaking his head. He's saying, don't watch it. No, I feel it's I, always good. Because I found it that fast. Phil's the man. Doing Phil's the man. I mean, that's good. Yeah. Phil's, no. Phil's our technical he's, wizard. The guy knows. He's everything. Yeah. He is. He's He is the he's guy. All, yeah. Yeah. But no, I think what you're doing, particularly for men, uh, with this is important. And, and speaking of things that are hard for people to hear, someone needs to speak what's hard to hear and hard to say. With right. love, of course, so, with so, in love. Uh, yeah, not right. we got so strength. Actually, what we've kind of said before is that men who think that they can just do it all themselves, those men are not strong. The men that are strong are men like us who know that we're flawed, that know that we need that spiritual support and that we go to church and we yeah. pray and we do all those things and ask for that strength. That's where strength is. It's Agreed. not the other way. Nope. That's why I differentiate guys from men. Guys are the people who are doing all the stuff where they think they run the world and men understand that we have a responsibility to our families, to ourselves, to our world, to be models of what a man is, someone who loves, cares, protects, and serves others. Amen. Um, so um, it's good that you're speaking that to your listeners because I don't think we can say it too much. Uh, not with this culture. We can we can podcast 365, uh, 24, 365, like your job, Bob, and I, I don't think we could say it enough with all the messages coming from the rest of the culture. Honestly. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. It's just... I know, um, but I hope you, how long you've been doing this? I hope you'll keep going because it's almost a year, almost a yeah. year. That's great. Just keep going. Um, you know, it, it's never going to be about how many, but if you touch one life, one, you've done something of great spiritual value. And that's our prayer. That's our prayer. Yeah. One and, person. You know, I love it. The, at the, you know, at the end of, you know, when the bishop does the ordination right, the old, when it's time for you to meet the Lord, he will say to you, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Um, God willing, that's what I hope to hear when it's my time to go and say, hey, you were a good servant. Yeah, you're flawed. Yeah, you messed up. But you tried to speak the truth. You could have loved more. You could have been more what I called you to be. But you tried to be the best you could be and welcome into the kingdom in some form, whether it's hanging out in purgatory for a while. Yeah. Whatever God which is okay. Uh, I'm okay with that's okay. I, 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 yeah. I don't worry about that stuff. Uh as I've gotten older, uh I have on the door of our house when the pandemic printed out the divine mercy. Um Jesus, I trust in you. Yeah. It's on the inside the door of the house. Um and it's also on my wallpaper on my phone. Um, because I want to remember that that's who I trusted. Not it. Hey, you got it. Yeah. Um, that's who I trust. Uh, I don't trust myself half the time, but because who knows what's going to come out of my mouth. But I do trust in the Lord and where he's leading me. I'll tell you, despite all the challenges, the losses that we all go through, I mean, I, I had a family member suffer from addiction, recovered. Uh, I've had 
you know, wife had cancer, recovered. I mean, there's been so much in the last years, and yet God gets us through this stuff in his grace, despite layoffs. I've been through three rifts, reductions in force. My last company closed because of money. Uh, but yet, despite all of that, despite all of that, God gets us through if we only turn it to him and put it in his hands. And I've seen that power up close and personal. It blows me away. I, I, I just am astounded by it, honestly. It'll um, knock your not, socks off, won't it? It, it? Yeah. And as a Jewish Catholic, I never expected it. I just never expected it. It's just never. I mean, I thought, I thought Judy, I, I love my Jewish roots, don't get me wrong, but all we talk about is how we were, you know, a people that was always discriminated against and killed. And it's like, I don't want to be part of a, a bad, I, and I just got by Mitzvah and ran out the door. So, but our faith is just so alive. Our church is so alive. And yeah, we have problems. We all know what they are, but we have, we have the bulwark of truth, our church, and I will die defending it. And it's funny, since those, what, 15 years of total doubt, I have no doubt at this point in my life in Christ and who he is, that he is none. I spent 15 years not lost. And I know because I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you that Jesus is real. He is the savior. He exists. He loves us. And he calls us to die to self and to follow him. And despite my flaws with the podcast, without it, that's what I am trying to do. Um, can't do it. Can't say I do it well all the time. Ask my wife, she'll tell you. But um, I do it <laughs> by God's grace. But it's God that honest, is what this is all about for me. And, 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 Praise God. Yeah. And, like and, you, and, you, amen to that. So. And it's a good thing we have the women in our lives that we do because they put up with us and make us the men that we are. Uh, well, I can yes, yes. My original plan was to become a Lutheran, so I would not be a Catholic deacon. And if I hadn't met my Irish Catholic wife and married her and uh, converted to Catholicism instead of Lutheranism. So, um, right. but it's funny. I think if I were born Catholic, who knows? I would be a priest. I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know why I think that, but I do for some weird reason. I, I just feel like I, if that was what, you know, if I was born in a different family, I would, you know, but hey, I'm grateful for everything God has done and does do every day. And, uh, and God bless those um, Irish Catholics. Hey, <laughs> there's a lot of them back in Massachusetts. Let me tell you, Irish Catholics and Italian yeah. Catholics. Oh, I'm uh, sure. Yeah, we have a small state has four dioceses. You you know you you've got right. you know we've only got two in a state much geographically larger. So uh, right. You know, oh yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah. We're Catholic central back there. At least we used to be. Uh, but who knows now. All right. Yeah, we have a few. Anything else, gentlemen, before I know it's late your time and you gotta go to No, work. you lots of lots of content. Boy, lots of content. I love this I'm guy. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff no, we love eight. this. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't this say crazy. thank you enough. I get on fire with the spirit. I I can't it's sorry. Great. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna quell that at all. No, we're no. Lo I love it. Praise God. Because you never know what you're gonna get. You never know what you're gonna get with a guest. Some guests talk more than others yeah. and and that's fine i you gave us a lot and we totally okay. understand where you're coming from absolutely yeah, i think it's love your wonderful. witness love your witness yes. you can see yeah. yeah and so genuine right so genuine and so from the heart yeah so i i get i get your podcast much more now from having this short interview because it totally i can totally relate to listening to your podcast now and where you're coming from what place you're coming from yeah, what I'm trying to do, guys, as we wrap up, is I'm trying to come from a place. One of the things I learned in management training is the concept of integrity. That an object has integrity when its function is in place. I was taught that humans have integrity when they think, feel, do, and act according to what they believe. And I finally, although far from perfect, don't hear anything, watch anything, do anything that's contrary to what I believe. And I found that since I gave up things that I used to do that were against what I believe, that's a lot easier to live the faith in integrity. Still imperfectly, way imperfect, but much more integrated into myself 
since I'm not doing anything on the side that doesn't fit in what I believe and what the church teaches. So that's really helped me over the years. Whether it was listening to a radio show that really kind of didn't treat women all that well. So why am I watching it? Why am I listening to it? Put it away. Things like that. And as I put things away that aren't of God, it doesn't mean I listen to, you know, I'm a tech guy for my hobby. So I listen to a lot of Android stuff and technology stuff as well as Catholic stuff. And um, <clears throat> I'll tell you, everything is in line with belief, with what I believe. It just makes it so much easier to be authentic as me, as opposed to feeling like there's a lot of hypocrite in me. Um, so I'm not much hypocrite, but imperfect in living it for sure. Um, in all humility, very imperfect. But now I'm not a hypocrite. Uh, but I'm many other things like a pain. But anyway, um, ask my staff, they'll tell you. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. So thank you guys. I'm sorry. Once I start talking about stuff I'm passionate about, it is. No, I, thank you I, for coming on. It, yeah, it, we, it, wonderful. I, I, Phil, I should have warned you about this. I didn't know how <laughs> I would be. I've never been in my life. No, so, I can't, so I had no idea what to do. I just asked the Holy Spirit, give me the words. Uh, Amen. That's why, right. Please, give me the words. Everybody that comes on here acts strange, right? When you're in the strange Catholics living room here, you're no, acting strange. If you have, okay, <laughs> we're used if you have to it. Marketing and come up with a strange Catholics T-shirt. Let me know. I'm going to buy one. All I, right. I mean, Good to know. Strange right. Catholics member. Because you guys are as strange as I am, and that's saying something. So uh, we're thank a good. You, Deacon Steve. God yeah. bless you. Thank Bye. you for coming on. Yeah, thank we you. can't say thank you enough thank again. You Phil, and I'll let you know if I get any Minnesotans out of this deal. Perfect. But, uh, I'll send you the, when I'm done with yeah, this send segment, me, I'll send you this audio. Podcast. Um, I write a storyboard up for what I'm going to do um, every week. So, I, you know, I have everything kind of figured out because I can't memorize it all because um, it's half an hour, basically. But um, I will, and the next one that I haven't written yet, you will be the feature for truth in the media. So the more you can give me about each of you, you know, tell me a little bit about each of you. So I'll tell the audience who you are, um, what you're doing. Um, so I will hopefully the 20 people, whatever it is, listening in my one from uh, Pennsylvania, I'm going to ask them sure. to listen to Catholics uh, because we're all a little strange. So we'll see if we can drum up some business for you along the way. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you very Terrific. much for your That's time. Awesome. God bless the three of you. It's an honor. Yeah, you too. Brother Deacons and soon to be Brother Deacon um, as we all journey together to serve the Lord. So God bless all of you. God, God bless, bless you. you. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Have a good all night. Right. All right. Bye. Well, that was pretty amazing. I I didn't want to speak over him, but I mean, he 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 just went. He went. No, I was like, yeah. this is good. This for is, him. Good. This Outstanding. is beautiful. I love it. I loved it. Oh, yeah, that was really and, good. Oh, my goodness. And the only reason I broke in there in the middle was like halfway through, somebody might go might be like, hey, what's going on? Let's just reiterate. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I we love had it. been doing it for like 30 minutes. Right. And I looked at the clock. It's like we're at 50 minutes, you know, and I mean, I'm just like. You know, he's okay. just like he's a stream of consciousness guy. He's a lot like I am in that regard. Yes. Just just starts talking. So I don't know that we should even do a segment. I think we'll introduce the podcast. We'll say we're doing a very special interview with Deacon Steve W. Uh, and we'll run away with it unless you want to do anything else. And then we move. I, I, I'm, as long as Terry's OK with not we can save Terry. We can save your saint. Or you can do two next week and split them, you know, truncate them down and just do the high points if you want. It's up to you. Uh, uh, you can no. either use this one or or do two. But we'll be we'll go way over because we got 50 minutes that even if he cuts it down to 35. Yeah. You know, we're going to have a way full podcast. Yeah. 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 And you yeah. guys got to talk probably 10 minutes before I got on. Or did you start recording yet? I before did I start it. before you got on, I think, because well, okay. I wanted no, to capture I, what he was saying. It's I, all right. I, think oh, okay. I hit recording not long after Terry came on because I was like, he's saying good things. I want to I need to start recording. Yeah, this no, now. that's Should've fine. Started, by the way. So I think after a while I was going to say. Are we starting? Are we not starting? And then I saw the recording started, but we start the recording anyway. But yeah, I was going to say, OK, are we going to do some sort of official starting and talk? 
But then he started talking about why well, I became this is why I started the podcast. And I'm like, oh, he's already doing he's this. Going, he's going. I was so like, he's going. Gotta, I'm glad I guess I hit the record button. So we got a good like 40, 45 minutes of that for sure. Yeah, he spoke yeah, yeah, about a lot of more. different things. And we didn't really ask yeah. him that many questions. But, no. We, I mean, we, just it, it was hard to get a word in edgewise. And that's I loved it, though. I really I think it's I think it will come out well. You know what I mean? I'll I'll split up the little bits that we say and bring it in with his stuff. I think it will flow really well. I think if we come up with an introduction and um, who was your saint you were doing, Terry? We're doing St. Martin uh, the first Pope and yeah, the town team baseball team. How yeah, long is that segment? Uh Actually, this week, the notes are pretty short. Do we want to do a saint spotlight? Then we still have a saint for, because then we have a saint every week, I think. Your call, guys. I can save it. I can I can uh, bank it, or we can roll with it right now. It's Well, it just depends on the time. I mean, are you really going to cut, how much are you going to cut out of our talk with, uh, you know, we don't want to really want to go over 35 or 40 minutes because then, even if he does Saint Spotlight, nobody's going to listen to it. I mean, it's well, just going to be wasted and, time. And again, if it doesn't fit or it's too long, then I have a Saint Spotlight that we can put in for next week. You know what I mean? I can throw it out. You know, I can we can put it in or we can do a double Saint or I can just, like I talked about with you, did I talk about, did I text it? About breaking right. out Terry's Saint Spotlight and making that a separate, um, uh, separate video with the icon of the saint or whatever. I said that. Yeah, we talked about something? it here a couple hours ago when you okay. said, go look at the video I that I can't look at. Yeah, well, I, and I shared it. So it says it's private, but it's it's viewable by you guys because I added your but Gmail. I clicked on it and it said private. Oh. Okay, well, let's, okay, so let's do it. Are you ready to do it, Terry? Should I do, I can, uh, yeah, you do your Saint <laughs> Spotlight. I'll mute. Uh, I'll turn my camera off. All right. We'll, um, or we can leave cameras on. I guess it doesn't matter, but. It doesn't um, matter to me. Uh, and then, so Terry, I, because I wouldn't have told this to Terry because I only told this to Bob. What I'm planning on doing is breaking out the Saint Spotlight video segments because I have all those for like a bunch of time. Almost okay. all, for most of the Saints. I have video since we started using Teams in sure. August of last yeah. year. So I have a lot, a lot of Saint Spotlights. I'm going to break those out. I'm going to bring in like icons, you know, pictures of the yeah. saints that you're talking yep. about. Maybe a couple of quotes and bring those in while you're talking. Yeah. Maybe going back, back and forth to the to the video of you. Um, but, or at least during the introduction, okay. it'll have you and then it'll fade over into a, All right. a, a, whatever. So that's kind of what okay. I'm thinking is breaking that okay, apart. That's to make... not what he's going to do. He's going to put it over your face because he said nobody wants to see your face. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Bob. That's exactly what he said. I was just like this. Okay. <laughs> and I agreed. Nobody wants to see your face. So we well, want to see a saint's face. Right. Well, they don't want to see mine. So the <laughs> less they have I'm to see I'm not saying this. they want to see mine either. Although I'm the best looking of the group. I'll just do, I'll just blow Actually, my Actually, I would think Phil is, but that's okay. Well, so I keep you telling you, you better look radio. You've got the face for radio, Phil. Yeah, not so much. But he's I, younger than us, so yeah. he's still got that youthful, boyish. Look. I look, I look a lot younger than I am. Yes, you do. I will I'll say be that. Fifty-four this year. I was gonna say because to me, you don't even look like you're fifty. Now, me, I look like I'm fifty. Most people. Well, it. let's just let's just be honest now. Most people, they ask me if I'm in my early to mid forties, which my wife laughs because she doesn't get that, but they do. And if you meet my brother, he looks really young. He looks a lot younger and he's in his mid forties, late forties. Okay. Terry, I, I would agree that, you know, you, I, you, you could be 50, you could be 55, right? I mean, I, I agree with you, but at some point it all catches up with us. I mean, you know, yep. and I think Phil, Phil looks 35, or he could be 40. You know what I mean? You, it could be both. <laughs> I think my metabolic score is 37, which I don't appreciate because I feel like it is a lot faster than 37. Okay. 
gets a lot slower the older you get. So it does a lot. So okay, let's you Terry, are you ready to tape? <laughs> are you ready to um, whatever we're calling this uh, the, your portion? Record record the Saints okay. spotlight. Bob, do you yeah, want to do a you, welcome back? Because we'll yeah, yeah. after I the Deacon gonna, Steve gonna we'll do transition. A, yeah, we call that in the business a segue. But yeah, I, I don't know what we call it in the business because I'm not in the business. All right, but you like to give the business, that's for sure. Okay, everybody, be quiet. All right, we're back from that wonderful interview with Deacon Stephen. Outstanding interview, and now it's time for the always popular Saint Spotlight. And Terry's got it with St. Martin. Terry, take it away. Thanks, guys. Good evening, podcast listeners. Good to be with you. After that wonderful interview, we this week are talking about one of the early, early, early saints, Pope St. Martin I. He was both a pope and a martyr. Uh, he's also known as Martin the Confessor. His feast day is April the 13th. He was born at Todi on the Tiber River, the son of Fabricius. He was born of noble birth, a great student, commanding intelligence, of profound learning, and of great charity to the poor. He became a deacon and served in Rome when he acquired a reputation for education and for holiness. Pope Theodore I chose Martin as his representative to the emperor in Constantinople during a period of theological controversy between the imperial capital and the church. The dispute in which Martin became involved first as a papal nuncio and later as pope himself was over Christ's human nature. Although the church has always acknowledged the eternal son of God as becoming man within history, some Eastern bishops continued to insist that Christ's human nature was not entirely like that of other human beings, a teaching strongly supported in the East. Twice, emperors had officially favored this position, Heraclius by publishing a formula of faith and the II by silencing the issue of one or two wills in Christ. Now, St. Martin would later become Pope Theodore's success successor as Bishop of Rome on July 21st, 649. Martin himself had consecrated without waiting for the imperial confirmation and was, and soon after that, called a council in the Lateran Basilica in Rome at which 105 bishops met. Five sessions were held on October 5th, 8th, 17th, 19th, and 31st in the year 649. Martin insisted that the teaching which denied Christ's human will could not be glossed over as an irrelevant point. To refuse to acknowledge Christ's distinctive divine and human wills, he believed was to deny the biblical teaching that Christ was like humanity and everything other than sin. The Byzantine Emperor Constance II retaliated against Pope Martin by sending his own representative to Italy during the council with orders to either arrest the Pope or have him killed. A henchman of the Emperor who attempted to assassinate the Pope while he was distributing Holy Communion later testified that he suddenly lost his eyesight and could not carry out the death sentence. In 653, the emperor again sought to silence Pope Martin, this time by sending a delegation to capture him. A struggle ensued and he was taken to Constantinople before being exiled to the island of Naxos for a year. Those who tried to send help to the exiled Pope were denounced as traitors to the Byzantine Empire. Eventually, he was brought back to Constantinople as a prisoner. Publicly, the emperor had Martin stripped of his episcopal robes, which were ripped from top to bottom, similar to the curtain when Christ was executed. 
on the cross. In May of 655, he was banished to the Cremerian Peninsula, where he suffered from the famine of the land as well as the roughness of the land and its people. Martin, exiled and neglected, wrote that he prayed for the safety of the faithful in Rome and especially for their new pastor. But hardest to take was the fact that the Pope found himself friendless. His letters tell how his own church had deserted him and his friends had forgotten him. They wouldn't even send him oil or corn to live off of. Martin wrote that he was not only separated from the rest of the world, but even deprived of the means to live. Tortures and cruel treatment having taken their toll, Martin died shortly thereafter on September 6th, rather September 16th, 655. He was the last of the early popes to be venerated as a martyr. The Third Ecumenical Council of Constantinople eventually vindicated Pope Martin I by confirming in 681, let's try that again, by confirming in 681 that Christ had both a divine and a human will. That's it. Pope St. And Martin the first. Pope and martyr. Pray for pray us. For pray us. for us. Constantinople. Well, like Crimean. Hey. You got Crimean. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, and I'm not going to do the other one. Hey, Byzantine. Everybody. Yeah, Byzantine. You were tracking. Thank you, everyone, for listening to us in this special uh, podcast this week with our wonderful interview with uh, Deacon Stephen. Um, this is a good time for you, though, to go to your your podcast app right now, where you find us. It's either on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you find us, and go ahead and rate us. Okay, rate us five because of that wonderful, outstanding interview with Deacon Steven. So rate us five, and then also hit that subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed, you need to subscribe right now. Hit the subscribe button. So you make sure that you get it in your feed every week and you get the strange Catholics in there every week because you got to have a dose of strange Catholics every week. All right. Leave us a message. You can do it on the podcast platform. You know, leave us, you know, some comments can be a message. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, love the same spotlight. I think Bob is the most beautiful young man in the world because he doesn't look in his 50s. All that stuff. You can put that on there. You can say how, how much you don't like us as well. You can do that. Leave it there. Or there's a better place that you may be able to do it, which is? StrangeCatholicsPod at gmail.com. You may also leave us a voice message at anchor.fm forward slash strange Catholics. And, and please give us your prayer intentions and prayer requests because we're here to pray for you and pray with you. Okay. All right, it's time for the end of the podcast. We ready for final prayer? Yeah, let's do this. All right, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Wonderful and glorious God, thank you for this wonderful evening, this wonderful podcast to have the great interview with Deacon Stephen, his his wonderful faithfulness and and conviction in his belief system i just just it was just uplifting you 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 were just we could just all feel your presence during that interview god as as we go forward tonight we we would like to lift up these groups in prayer intentions for those trying to conceive and con- and conception to natural death. COVID, those suffering COVID, those families that are suffering with COVID, the the healthcare workers that are dealing with COVID, please God, just just lift them up and, and give them spirit and hope so they can get over their illness and keep going. Married couples and those who are struggling in their marriage right now, Lord, just just be there, be that, be that third person 
or third entity in that marriage, that bond between them to keep the man and woman together. Uh, for the, the crisis we're having on the southern border with all these unaccompanied children that are coming across the border without parents, please, Lord, we know they're scared. Just please be there for them and the, and the workers that are helping them, the border patrol and so on. Just, just please be there for them. And now I open it to my other two brothers for any other prayer intentions. For all those that suffer from addictions. For all those that are struggling in their faith. Or are far from their faith, they may be drawn ever closer to the warmth and the light of Christ. And just for those who are struggling to get through their day, may the Holy Spirit come down upon them and let them know the love of God and wrap them in God's tender care. And Lord, we ask you that, that you lift up all these specific intentions and all prayer intentions. Please, uh, please address all of these. And we ask this through your son, Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Wonderful, wonderful podcast. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Until next week, love you, brothers. Love you, brothers. Love you, brothers. Cut. Welcome to this week's episode of Strange Catholics. This week, we're going to interview Deacon Steve from Phoenix. He has a podcast called What is Truth Catholic Podcast. Our saint spotlight is Pope St. Martin I, the last pope that is a, labeled as a martyr. We'll now turn it over to our interview.